you got your first drawing tablet. Congratulations, welcome to the world of digital art. You may be wondering what software to choose when making digital art, or you don't have the money to shell out for programs that offer an annual fee plus many other fees. Don't make me get the hammer. Anyways, I'm here to teach you a little bit about Krita. Krita is the software that I use and that many people use as an alternative to the many programs that have turned their back on us. Except for the few that have actually cared about the value of artists. We love you all for that. Keep doing what you're doing. So, in this video, I'm going to teach you a few things about Krita. If you are one that wants to get into Krita, or if you're into Krita already, but you're a little bit overwhelmed with all the features that are provided to you. I want to elaborate that I am not going to cover any animation tools, as I'm still learning those myself. But once I get to a point where I know how to use those tools, I might do a video on that. So look forward to it. With that disclaimer aside, now I want to touch on the following topics. In this video, I am going to cover Krita's layout and UI, layers, brushes and tool options, features and techniques, and text and layer styles. Here are the timestamps for those topics as well. They are also separated into chapters so people can look at them at their own time. I wanted to make sure that this video was welcome to beginners and advanced learners, and to cover each section directly. All feedback is welcome at the end of the video, so let's get to it! After installing Krita, here's what it looks like. Click on new image and you will see a bunch of options here. We're only just going to focus on the pixels of the canvas and maybe the templates that might suit your needs if you go with a very specific canvas. After your piece is created, you may see a bunch of tabs on your screen. If that's overwhelming for you, don't worry, I have the solution. Go to settings, then go to dockers. It will come up with a screen with a list of what docs you can use. Click on the animation timeline box and now it is no longer seen as one of your dockers. When using Krita, the docs I'd suggest you to have are layers, color wheel, and brushes. Along with turning on the tools options, which we will be using later in the video. In addition to this, please make sure that you have your toolbox enabled on the left. That will also be important to learning the program. All digital art programs have a way to split each process of creating art into sections. This is called layers. For example, you can use layers to separate each process of making an art piece. For example, you can have a sketch layer, a line work layer, a layer for your base colors, shadows, and highlights, and they all mush together into creating the art piece. If that's a little confusing, I get it. I was a little confused too when I started. Let's break it down. In the layers tab, Press the plus button and add a new layer. Congratulations, you've done the first part. Now it's time to make something on that layer. With your selected brush, just scribble. Scribble on the page. Create another layer and do another scribble again. Unhide and show the layer again and you can see that there, these layers are separate entities from each other. Please note the I button is used to enable and disable the layer. In order for them to be in the same layer though, you can merge them down. Right click on the top layer, select merge with layer below, and now it's one layer. And that is how layers work. There are many brushes to choose from in Krita, whether it be stamps, paint brushes, inking brushes, or pencils. On the top bar, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush, or lower the opacity of the brush as well. You can also use vector tools to create specific shapes, such as lines, squares, and circles, which allow you to create shapes with those brushes as well. Remember me mentioning tool options at the start of the video, we're going to be using that to enhance our line art. On the tool options tab, click the button where it says basic and change it to stabilizer. Congratulations, you now have stable lines. The features and abilities that I'm going to discuss in this video are select and fill, clipping masks, and layer types. First off, select and fill. 
Go to the Tools tab and select the Select Tool. Click the part that you want colour in your line work and then go to the Select tab at the top, Grow Selection and increase it to at least one or two. Click on your Fill Bucket tool and BAM! You got colour! Next up is Clipping Masks. Add another layer on top of your colour layer. Press Shift and select your colour layer and newly created layer and then Control G to create a group. Select your new created layer again and you may see a A icon on the right of the layer tab. Click on it. Now you can create shadows and highlights within the colour layer without overlapping or going over the line work lines. Now that we have covered clipping masks, we are now on to the next topic, layer types. The layer types that I use are multiply for the shadows overlay for the first part of highlights and addition to add some extra light onto the piece. And for base colour, just keep it on normal. It doesn't need to be altered. The last section will be text and layer styles and how you can use those elements to make a logo. Let's get to the demonstration and see how it's done. On the tool tab, select the text option and drag a square along the canvas. Then you'll get prompted to type in some text. You can also use different kinds of fonts too. To download different fonts, you can use Google Fonts, which I'll link in the description. Play around with the colors and increase the size of the text and boom, you're pretty much set. But wait, we're not done yet. Let's add some pizzazz to the text, starting off with layer styles. Layer styles are different from layer types. They are effects that can be added on top of your layer. They are editable and you can turn them off and on. Right click on the layer and select layer styles. Go down to the last option that says stroke and tick the box. Ensure that you change the layer type from multiply to normal and lower the opacity or increase the opacity as you wish. Play about with the colors and press OK. Now you have a logo. Thank you to everyone for sticking by this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions down in the comments or want to suggest some things that I may have missed out, please let me know. I understand everyone is different to their learning styles, so I want to make sure that I touch everything in good detail. Maybe I'll make a part two one day. Anyways, I've been Nintan, your host of the Creative Corner, and I hope you enjoy this video. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Don't forget to stay creative, y'all.